What happened? Where's the professor? I was just here this afternoon. What is the purpose of your visit? Why all these questions? Would you please tell me what's happening? After you've answered my question. I'm a professor of Oriental Languages at Rudmore University. At the moment, I'm coordinating an international project on which Professor Roth is also working. Follow me. Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, I am joined by my favorite Marvel Comics character from the DC Universe and Dark Horse by way of comic books, Simon. Bro, do you even Loki? <laughs> I don't know what I was going for there. <laughs> Uh, hey, it's it's relevant. It's relevant. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I love quoting the Marvel movies. I gotta put her in the water. Yeah. So, folks, we are not talking comic books this time, but don't <laughs> don't think that's my last Marvel comics joke tonight because I'm an idiot. Um, we are getting a little obscure because apparently Severin hasn't put everything out on Blu-ray in regards to Italian horror, but hopefully me just making that dumb joke right now will mean this film will get a freaking Blu-ray by the time we release this episode. Oh my God. Maybe they'll be like lazy and be like, hey, can we use your show as the commentary? And and I'll be like, no. No, of course I will. But how about Spider Labyrinth from 1988 um, by, I believe his name is pronounced Gianfranco Gianni, that G might be silent. Look out, world. Uh, this is his only horror outing. He made a short film, apparently, but I cannot find any trace of it outside of a book. Um, the book I'm going to use for reference in this episode is uh, Roberto Curti's Italian Gothic Horror Films, 1980 to 1989, which is really good. Uh, you should definitely pick it up. Um, all three volumes are excellent. I didn't even look up a trailer for this thing. Remember, remember trailers? Yeah, I'm just wondering again about the distribution of this um, because there was the version I had previously seen. What was it? Was I think an Italian TV rip, and the one you sent me was what a Japanese laserdisc. Yeah, either Japanese laserdisc or Japanese VHS that was yeah cropped to yeah. be widescreen. Not sure. Mm. I am the urn that belongs to the weavers. The great cobweb is closing every passage. It's a labyrinth with no way out. Studying an ancient religion, different peoples on opposite sides of the world who worship the same gods. Doesn't sound like a very interesting subject. understand how important it is. 
Uh, but yeah, this is un unfairly obscure. I'm glad, like, Italian horror people have seen this, but it's it's kind of crying out for a blue, as I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found, um, if you have a version that's like an hour and 21, that is a shorter TV cut. And I believe the one I sent you is like uh, an hour 26. Yeah, I, I watched it last night, and I'm I'm... Not sure whether it was just some sort of little things added in or whether it's a case of, um, you know, we're into the different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like video standards, where it's a case of like PAL speed up or something. Yeah, NTSC versus PAL and, yeah, yeah, oh, and whatever yeah. <laughs> Japan uses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think they're on NTSC. I'm not sure, but uh, um, right. I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I think it's just those Europeans who are on the PAL thing. Well, they, they like having friends, so they got lots of PALs. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. It's listed on IMDb as two hours, and I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Oh yeah, I saw that, and I was like, God, I wish. I'm glad IMDb is getting worse. At, like their <laughs> their format sucks now, and like, what have they done to it? They just made it, but it bigger. <laughs> it's weird though, because like some movies, yeah, some movies you go and it's like the old school thing, and yeah. um, on this Spider Labyrinth thing, it's on the 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 new normal, right? Is right. that what we call it these days? Oh my God. So if you can't find this film, you should. Mm. Because we're about to spoil everything, and since this leans towards a certain type of film, which we'll talk about in a minute, th there's a lot of things to spoil. So, uh, if you can't find this frickin' movie, just email me, doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. I give seminars on how to find movies. Oh, yeah. Or I'll just send it to you. I don't... Whatever. <laughs> TED Talk. Yeah, I'll do a TED Talk of how to friggin' find a movie. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to go with, I don't think there's a tape. So, I'm just going to read, speaking of IMDb, um, here comes the plot synopsis. Alan Whitmore, a young American researcher, goes to Budapest to visit Professor Roth, with whom he collaborated on a secret project called Inextus, which is a new internet startup. Actually, it's a cryptocurrency, y'all. Y'all want to get bitcoined? Once he arrives in the Hungarian capital, I forgot that Budapest was the capital of Hungarian. Hungary, <laughs> Hungarian. <laughs> Alan finds Roth, who hands him a black book, which includes information of the utmost importance. So that's the first 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> that's very nice. Good job, guys. <laughs> but yeah, this, this movie exposed uh, the, the early 80s. Uh, problems with insider trading because that little book had all the uh, the names and addresses of all kinds of uh, stockholders. Mm. I don't know what's going on. I wonder if it's um, I'm going to connect it now, to, and I'm, yeah, nobody can convince me otherwise. It's I'm sure there's a little black book in. Uh, do you remember in Mulholland Drive in an early scene where there's like yes. a hit that goes kind of hilariously wrong? I was thinking of Mulholland Falls. When oh, you said like, that oh, just we... now. <laughs> It's been so many. Yes, I remember Mulholland Drive, but I keep thinking yes. about uh, Nick Nolte having a sex scene with Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> oh, God, I think we talked about this before. Of course we have, because um, it's like uh, he's too good for her. Mm. Like mm. she's so ugly and he's such a prime example of a beautiful man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's he's <laughs> basically like human baloney. Wait a minute, aren't they both in the... Well, God, we're coming back to the comic book movies. Are they both in the Hulk movie? The Ang Lee one as well. <laughs> I described Nick Nolte's human baloney. <laughs> I'm not ready to move on from my joke. Yes, I, they so. are. And the, the sex scene in that was really awkward. Because he kept mm. hulking out in his pants area. <laughs> oh, Doctor. Uh, did I mention a hurricane's coming to kill us all? So I have nothing, <laughs> I have nothing left to lose, brother. Uh, yeah. It's, oh God, it's been that kind of... Whoa, 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 Actually, you know what? Mm. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. You and I have had nothing to lose since, uh, since the frickin', uh, hidden episode. 
<laughs> oh, God, yeah. When we find out what was hidden inside of us, <laughs> which is, uh, you're a being of light and I'm a disgusting spider monster parasite, like in this movie. <clears throat> okay, here's the plot. We're going we're gonna to talk about it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. These boys are playing in a, in a cobwebbed filled room. Filled room. Uh, one is hiding from the other with a, a firearm, presumably fake. And uh, young Alan is the other boy who's uh, he, he gets curious. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He's playing hide and seek and he wants to hide from his pal. So he gets in this uh, cabinet and uh, freaking his buddy locks him in there. And that's when he sees a spider, which uh, I think was the beginning of the stop motion. Or was this just like yes, a little yes, puppet? It looks like it. Kind of creepy, um, I can't think of the word, but you know, that kind of uncanny, jerky sort of quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stop motion tends to have. Yes. I, see, I always am surprised by this because Italian horror didn't do a lot of stop motion. No. But when they did it, <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Mm. Um, I think there was stop motion in those uh, Hercules movies that uh, Luigi Cozzi did. Oh, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, I've not seen them. I, I know. Mm. I still haven't seen them either. I feel dumb. Like, I'm, like, really excited about these movies that I uh, have been somehow accidentally not purchasing forever. <laughs> and I buy everything. Mm. So, he sees the spider. He goes, ah, spiders. And uh, he wakes up. Our, our our hero, Alan, wakes up. He's grown up and bearded. <laughs> um, and this is probably the greatest actor on the planet. This is Roland Wabanga. Mm. who was a male model uh, turned actor. He is the worst part about this movie. Now, he doesn't need to be great, obviously, uh, but he he's a bit stiff, and I still like him. Mm-hmm. I still like his performance. Um, sadly, he only did three movies, and he died very young. All right. According to the, the Roberto Curdy's book, I believe right. uh, it's suspected that he died of AIDS. Oh, right. Okay. That uh, he kind of kept it on the down low. Uh, and, mm. and passed away very young and under some kind of mysterious circumstances. Mm. It's a shame. But uh, speaking of Hercules, uh, he was in uh, <laughs> mm. he was in uh, Sinbad of the Seven Seas with Lou Ferrigno, uh, directed by Enzo G. Castellari and an uncredited Luigi Cozzi. So there you go. Wow. Hey. Mm. Oh my God, John Steiner's in there. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> I will totally watch that. So um, he gets called into the uh, th- to talk to some vague men, mm-hmm. and uh, we get to hear this music for this movie, dude. So oh yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, let's talk Old about um, this is music by Franco uh, Piersanti, and I really wasn't that familiar with him. Uh, apparently, he's a big jazz guy, which is why there's. Uh, some some nice jazz in this movie. Oh, the, uh, opening credits, yeah, yeah, definitely. But his freaking theme is perfect. Mm. The theme for this music is just so haunting and so lovely. I can't even get over it, man. Oh my gosh, um, I want to play it in this episode, like throughout the whole episode, because I love it so much. But I, I I'm gonna put this episode on YouTube eventually. Yeah, and I don't want it to get taken down. So, um, folks. Use your imagination. It goes da goo ga goo ga do ga ga goo ga do ga goo ga. Um, one time, uh, Simon and I did a whole episode on scat talking, and he, and he <laughs> taught me how to do that. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> I'm a scat man. <laughs> so <laughs> scat man. Uh, so he gets in his red Cadillac and he drives around uh, freaking Dallas, the most fascinating city oh, on the right, planet. Yeah. And uh, he's he listened to that old time swing. And he gets to his meeting uh, where he meets the serious men in suits and a plus priest. Uh, yeah, they want him in Budapest, uh, which I'm going to make two movie references here. Uh, one is mm. uh, Keanu Reeves in oh, Bram right, Stoker's yeah. Dracula. Budapest. <laughs> All right. I knew that was ringing a bell for God. I need to rewatch that. And the other one is uh, from Avengers uh, is when he goes, this is just like in Budapest. And he goes... You and I remember Budapest very differently. <laughs> One of those men in that scene is Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> She's a man, baby. So they give him this assignment to go to Budapest and find out Dr. Leo Ross's research. Uh, they have lost contact with uh, their boy, 
Oh, excuse me, Roth. Roth. Mm. It was Roth, <laughs> but he had a lisp, so now it's Roth. So he needs to go check out Leo Roth's uh, – get his reports on this Inextus thing, which is some kind of holy grail of historic importance. Yeah, there's some like, I don't know, international scholarly business, possibly, I don't know, intelligence. So you just wonder what the hell's really going on here and say who all these men in the suits are. And it couldn't help me think of just I've been watching so much X-Files recently. I, I got a bit of a <laughs> sort of similar vibe. Absolutely. That's great. That's a perfect example of uh, uh, MacGuffin to the uh, like science fiction-esque degree. Mm, yes. As soon as he leaves the room and I give him his assignment, he's like, perhaps we should have told him everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, he flies to Budapest. Uh, we are spared a long scene at the airport and a long flight. Uh, obviously, uh, Mario Bava had nothing to do with this. And uh, he gets to uh, Budapest and this beautiful lady, uh, who we'll find out is named mm. Genevieve Weiss. Uh, played by the just utterly gorgeous uh, Paolo, excuse me, Paola Rinaldi. You still thinking about Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, I just want to make every woman a man, baby. <laughs> <sighs> I think if you wanted to get information out of me, like if I had some government secrets, uh, which obviously I do, just show me an Austin Powers movie. And by the <laughs> credits, I will ask you to release me and give you all the information you want to know. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I think British people should cancel that. Like, if you're going to do cancel culture, let's have British people get offended and, like, cancel the Austin Powers series. On a similar line, did Scottish people ever cancel? What was that movie? Did he direct? Was it So I Married an Axe Murderer? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Axe Murderer has canceled that movie. <laughs> I actually really like that movie now that you mention it. Yeah, I've only seen it once probably over 20 years ago. I thought it was okay. It's happily 90s. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he's leering at uh, Genevieve uh, while she's driving, uh, just, just staring at her legs. And she's like, hmm, this guy's funny and charming. Uh, but he, he doesn't want to go to the hotel yet. He wants to go um, meet Dr. Roth. Uh, so he gets dropped off. And there's a weird kid. Uh, get used to weird characters. There's everyone's weird in Budapest. Oh yeah, it's the whole entrance to this um, wherever it is, sort of like, like apartment oh, yes. complex or something. I mean, you have some twitching curtains. So when you get out of the car, you have this really nice kind of tilt or like canted angle. Yeah, dude, little Dutch it's angle the, action. Uh, coming yeah, out yeah. yeah. Uh, this is uh, a cinematographer named Sebastiano Celeste. Um, he's actually the son of Mama Celeste, who made all those pizzas. Ha ha ha! I'm sorry, just through. It threw me off because I just seen who he's credited here, and I didn't notice this yesterday. I thought his name looked familiar. So he's credited as Nino Celeste, and I think he did. Um, first thing that comes to mind, I'm sure he shot some of the yeah the two Lucio Fulci House of Doom TV movies. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, this guy's mm. career is awesome. Did some crime films like Violent Naples, and uh, let me play with my IMDb ness. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad I said that. That's that's nice. Uh, let's see. So 11 horror films, including one of my all-time favorites, uh, Night of the Devils. Oh, uh, wow. I'm not sure if he was cinematographer. No, I think he was just in the camera department on that one, but mm. still. Mm. So, he, yeah, he's killing it in this movie. Uh, but uh, the kid disappears creepily, and then at the door he meets the weird Celia, who is uh, oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. This is Celia Roth, played by Margarita van Kraus. Uh, she's a Romanian lady. Uh, you'd be surprised how many um, freaking Romanian movies I've seen. I think I think I would too. Yeah, I would also. Yeah, um, but uh, she she lets him in, but she's telling him like, "Yo, dog, uh, Leo's acting very strange. Um, he's uh, he's wiggity wiggity whack." <laughs> and uh we meet leo and he is terrified of his wife like he is so scared of this woman um and he warns uh, our pal alan he's like you're in grave danger he uh opens a secret compartment i think it was in a, a telephone or in something and then he opens up the secret compartment gives him a handful of polaroids uh, which are all dick pics <laughs> and uh, he hands him a, a, a secret black notebook um just like the one in uh the thing you referenced earlier. Mulholland Falls. Thanks. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
So while they're talking, um, uh, Leo gets literally blackballed. Uh, the, the, presumably the child outside threw this black ball into the room at him and it smashes through the window and he's like, yikes. Alan looks out the window and then Leo disappears. Oh, so just to back up a bit, I yeah. realized that's kind of, it's not like a huge Italian horror staple, but that is a nice image, you know, the child in the swing we do see, obviously, in a yeah. few a few Italian horror films, I think, obviously, especially of uh, Kill Baby Kill and Shock. And, oh, one, actually, that kind of connects to this, although it's not really creepy, in Five Dolls for an August Moon, which has, I think, William Berger, doesn't it, who's in this? Hey, yeah, that's right. Boom. Very nice. Um, he's Well, he's a known swinger. <laughs> hey. Uh, so after this, he meets back up with Genevieve, who takes him back to his hotel. And uh, it's it's strange there, too. Who would have thought? Yeah. Wow. Did you Weird. notice, even before they went in, they, I guess the door knockers? They're like the most imposing, gargantuan fucking things I've ever seen. <laughs> Dude, once, once in a great while, I will miss a pair of knockers in a film. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those times. No, I missed them completely. We meet uh, the, the mistress of the hotel, which is uh, Mrs. Kuhn, uh, K-U-H-N, if you're asking. Um, and this is uh, by Stefan Audran, which I like her alliteration of her name there. Mm. That's probably not how you pronounce it. But uh, she is, uh, I know her immediately from freaking uh, Jess Franco's Faceless. Oh, right. But like f- like actual film nerds uh, will know her as the one-time wife of Claude Chabrol and oh. the uh, one-time wife of Jean-Louis Trintignant. Uh, Trinit, good night. Trintignant. Oh, right. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's in The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie and a bunch of other films I've never seen because, you know, art. Did she ever do anything with um that German guy everybody likes? <laughs> oh, is that... Oh no! What? Fast, is it? Is, he is German. Isn't he? What, Fassbender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. No, I've I've still never seen any of his films. I'm ashamed. I'm amazing at film history, brother. <laughs> that German guy everybody likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know the German all... guy who directed uh, Possession <laughs> and Sallow. Oh. He's the one who directed Ken Russell's Devils. The Devil. Ken Russell's Devils Reject. <laughs> The third Everybody mother, right the third motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother! So yes, I love her. She's amazing. Uh, she's got a black cat, and right here, mm-hmm. I know we're not on video, but I've got a black cat. Oh. Unlike her black cat, uh, mine has no teeth, mm. and she just bit me. <laughs> I got gummed. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see a doctor. So, or a vet. In his room, uh, Alan looks through Leo's notebook full of some cryptic writings. Um, things like, it is a labyrinth without an exit, and other strange things. And then uh, Alan gets distracted from uh, perusing this as there's a storm brewing. And Genevieve is just getting naked in her hotel, or just her, her flat across the street. You do? Um, she's like, boobs out, y'all. And uh, he decides to go back because um, good old Leo wants to see him immediately. And so he mm. can't get through. Mrs. Coon is calling constantly, can't get through. So he goes out in the storm where he meets our buddy, William Berger. Yes. Uh, who's delicious uh, double cheese, double bacon <laughs> burger. Uh, he's just amazing. <laughs> Even when he's playing oh, this yeah. crazy uh, homeless guy here, crazy hobo dressing guy. It reminded me a bit of um, so we see the kind of heavy Lovecraft sort of vibe here. Kind of quite yes. of um, I'm sure there's a similar character in The Shadow of Innsmouth. Yeah, yeah, and by yeah. By kind of proxy, a film I really need to revisit. I've only seen once. So that's Stuart Gordon adaptation of that uh, Dagon. Right, right. Um, the the guys who wrote this, there's quite a few writers. Um, mm. The the main dude is uh, Tonino. I believe it's Tonino Cervi or Cervi. Yeah. Um, he uh, directed a Brad favorite, which is a very amazing film called Queens of Evil. Oh, man. Yeah. Still need uh, to watch that. And according to the book I read, he saw our boy Gianfranco Gianni's short film. Mm. And it was so impressed by it that he dug up this old script that he'd written and said, hey, do you want to direct this? We'll make a whole ton of money. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Gianni said, okay, I'll, I'll do this horror thing. Sure, why not? It's, it, he was intrigued. According to the book, he was intrigued by the, the trappings of like 
uh, B horror movies and like working with yeah. a low budget and stuff. So he took the job, uh, but he immediately mm-hmm. called in a couple of people to help yeah. make the screenplay a little more modern because it was probably one that had been sitting around since the 70s. Uh, but yes, long story short, too late. Um, it was very, <laughs> very influenced by good old uh, H.P. Lovecraft. That old racist. <laughs> <laughs> you are very correct with the Lovecraftianness. Now, uh, there's some other references coming up in this um, that we will talk about. William Berger, he warns him. He's like, I'm here to save you. And he warns him of the vortex that he cannot escape if he gets too close to it. Also known as the donut shop I went out to this morning in the rain. <laughs> to Actually, I just missed the rain, but I went to Nicola's mm-hmm. Donuts here in Tampa. Uh-huh. And um, I believe my arteries are now hardened and closed forever. That's fine. So he gets to his, his destination. He ignores William Berger, goes to his destination uh, of uh, Leo's place. Not Leo from Twin Peaks. <laughs> Uh, but we get a great uh, Hitchcock reference here where um, the right, people yeah. are standing around uh, outside in the rain and the police are there and the lights are flashing. And I was like, let me guess, they're going to do an overhead shot of those black umbrellas. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, mm-hmm. they did an overhead shot of those black umbrellas, just like Hitchcock's famous film, Psycho. No, I think yeah. it was I think it was Foreign Correspondent, actually. But. Yeah, that's the one, sir, I think. Hey, come on. His, <laughs> his famous movie, Family Plot. Who knows? That might even happen in Family Plot. I've never seen it. Jamaican. I don't know. Just throwing titles. Did you just call me a Jamaican? Um, I mean, I'd, yeah, I I'd guess be, I did. I'd be proud to be a Jamaican. So, uh, the cop, the cop <laughs> immediately takes his passport. <laughs> yeah. Which should be the end of every paranoid thriller. That should just be the end. The <laughs> credits. Just roll the credits, dude. This this uh, round, doughy-headed freaking cop. I can make fun of him because I'm also disgusting. Uh, he takes his uh, passport w- and he gives it to him without question. And dude, you know what we get to see, Simon? Mm. We get to find out that professor, he's pretty hung <laughs> from the ceiling with giant cobwebs. Uh, oh, when, wow. he, when he inquires about uh, Dr. Roth's wife. Dr. Roth's? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Roth's? wife uh they find out that 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 lady didn't exist so celia just doesn't exist um a lot of people don't believe that my wife lietta exists because how could i have ever found a woman oh (laughs) come on uh so uh so after uh well yes genevieve is there she's looking very distraught as well um after they're done being questioned by the cops uh, they go back to the hotel, and uh, my favorite line of the movie, which will probably be the intro to this show, is they're lamenting uh, Dr. Roth's untimely demise and, and how messed up things were. And uh, Alan says, yeah, I could use something strong, too. And a lot of it. <laughs> Speaking, I think they're talking about drinks. But they could be talking about huge dicks. Yeah, who is it you were saying? Was, oh, that, yeah, well, does he really, yeah, need a, a stiff one, which you were alluding before to his, uh, his kind of acting style? It's like, yeah, maybe, unless it's gonna, he's going to have that much of, he needs to have that much of a lot of a stiff thing to kind of kind of push through it and loosen it. I don't know. <laughs> I've got a joke later. I'd make it now, but oh, yeah. I want to, yeah, I already wrote, I have a joke written at the end for something right. very along those lines. We're, we're on the same page here. Well, uh, so... Just before this conversation, the good old Mrs. Coon is interrogating Alan. Like, what did he tell you? What did he tell you? Did he tell you anything good? What did he tell you? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. What did he tell you? Uh, and she kind of gives up. He doesn't spill the beans because, of course, you know, like Leo told him, don't tell anybody about this information I'm passing you. Like she's kind of deputized everybody in the hotel. Like, guess <laughs> yes. staff to the Steve's so drop anyway. Creepy. She asks everyone um, to leave. They just drop their forks mid meal and just leave this like little restaurant mm-hmm. attached to the hotel. It's so good. Oh boy. Uh, Maria the maid uh, tries to get to him. She she also tries to like warn Alan that shit's getting real. And then uh, again, when he's alone in his room, Alan sees freaking Genevieve across the street getting naked again. And this time, it's not subtle. She knows she's being oh, no. watched. She's putting her hands on the window and smiling. At it. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, my God. But then the lights go out, or he turns the light out, and then the cabinet door opens. And inside, mm. is a spider! 
<laughs> and so, yeah, we're getting flashbacks to his uh, childhood trauma with this spider. I got a bit confused last night with, and this actually happened about twice in the movie with separate things. With you know the kid with the cap who is one of the people who stood outside yeah. Ruff's uh, apartment place. The way it was cut for a moment, I kind of thought, is this meant to be? And when he saw him in the courtyard, is he, was he kind of looking at his past self or something? But no, Ooh. I don't think that's what it is. But that'd but be I great. Was, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. There's only there's only one kid in Italy. Hmm. I don't know. So, uh, so yes, um, that night, uh, Maria gets uh, rewarded for uh, trying to be nice and, and saving Alan. Um, she walks into the bedsheet zone, which is just next door to the Twilight Zone. Of course. And we get our, our very much uh, uh, Suspiria nod here with this whole, uh, this like, uh, let's make walls out of bedsheets. It also Some reminded the, me um... of, uh, you were watching Zombie mm-hmm. 3 last night, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't there, like, the hospital that has all the bed sheets as walls, too? There is something like that, or some use of bed sheets, or I think maybe reveal of somebody's behind one. But, yeah, yeah. very much, I'm, I'm glad I, I doubled those two. They had some nice overlap and resonance, you know, lots of green lighting. It kind yeah. of, the, the the final scene in this, it kind of weirdly felt a little bit like the opening scene in that. And But nice. then, like, tonally, obviously the film's <laughs> feel totally different, so it's kind of a perfect double feature, really. Uh, hands start grabbing at her through the sheets and mm. um, somehow they resisted pulling her clothes off. I am mm. I'm going to applaud. That's, yeah. <laughs> Americans don't have that kind of restraint, you know, like an American film, <laughs> at least one of her, um, what's the term? Breasticle. Yes. That's yes. One. Breasticles, testicles, chain wallet, watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, please <laughs> help me. <laughs> Too late. Oh god. Yes, I am beyond help. She gets murdered. A buck-toothed creepazoid uh with a knife comes out. This is our 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 pal Celia. This is her boss form, like if you're playing video games <laughs> um and you think you've killed the boss, but it, you just break its uh outer shell and there's a bigger boss inside it. Yes. Like a like a little Russian doll. Yeah, she's uh she's got a way about her. She's this villain cuz you know, we're we're getting our our uh, dare I say it giallo vibes from this film we've been yeah. getting giallo vibes for a while now yeah this you know it's and i know there's people who are probably screaming at us right now to even think of suggesting it but it's a whole um it was kim newman won it you know it's all giallo fantastico yeah sort of subgenre and even exactly. you know without that you have the the setups of the you know stranger in the strange land you know having your passport taken uh everybody you know seems to be in on something or you know so on and so forth it's, it's kind of all there exactly but yeah she uh she she kills the shit out of mary the maid and it's it's oh just my a God. glorious freaking death scene man it's badass would you say i don't know because there's a lot of great stuff in this this might be like a, the standout scene i don't know I think so. I think in terms of uh, well, I have a favorite scene, but yeah, this would be this would be the okay. standout scene. My favorite scene is much later. That uh, oh, cool. It, it just it's one of those moments where you see something, and mm-hmm. it's like a small like yes, and you're like okay, this is cool, and then it builds and builds, and by the time it gets to the conclusion of this moment, you're like this movie is not fucking around. Like I really like that. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that when we get to that. But yeah, the, the just the staging of this from the setup, you know, you have that nice, uh, again, sort of Italian horror staple, or horror staple in general, the spiral staircase and the, oh, yeah. the cat that appears and there's a bit like billowing curtain, curtains and the bouncing ball, which again, yes. obviously that, you know, linking to the swing is another one. Um, yeah, yeah, I love it. Alan is, uh, he hears these screams and he gets up to go like investigate to see what's going on. And uh, he meets up with Mrs. Coon, who's in a room by herself. Mm. Uh, presumably by herself, um, and hmm. she's got the walls, uh, not the walls, she's got the windows uh, all bricked up. She wants to be very alone, but she's rocking the cradle of love. <laughs> That's a song, Speaking of right? rocking, I have, I think, is it? I swear it's a song. <laughs> Intrigued. Well, there's a song called Cradle of Love. And there's a Billy Idol song called Cradle of Love. So, yeah, he literally says in the there song, go. let's go rocking in the Cradle of Love, which oh. sounds disgusting. <laughs> Get away from yeah, the cradle, you fucking pervert. 
it's, it's like what were they thinking with that um but yeah speaking of rocking as well it's like who or what is rocking that horse oh yeah it's in there yeah dude uh so she, yeah she's she's lamenting the death of her child <clears throat> and uh he sees her her spider scar she has a scar on her mm. wrist that's the shape of a spider and so she's rocking this thing and rocking this thing and she tells a story about her child dying and how the soul of her child just went into the, the blackness into the nothingness mm. And he's like, dude, what about God? Like, why don't you mm. like turn to the Lord for comfort? And she's like, no, thank you. She's just, she's a, a tad nihilistic after the death of her child. Mm. And she says the scar on her wrist is uh, when she tried to kill herself. But <laughs> no. no. Meanwhile, <laughs> Mary's <laughs> body is just stashed in the closet. Oh, and I want to mention the inhuman, yeah. uh, speaking of Lovecraftian things, the inhuman mm-hmm. screeching of Celia the murderer whenever she's oh coming God, around. Yeah. Sound in general in this and like yes. linking back to the music, I thought to say earlier, when you have the reveal of um, Roth when he's found hanging um, or hung or whatever, yeah. uh, they, the, the music there is really kind of, you have these like queasy sounding like violins. Yes. Um, and like there's something else going against it where it's just, it's just skin crawling really. Yeah, this but is yeah, kind of very much score. like that sound. Just what the doctor ordered. So then we go to the bathhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which is a very unusual moment. So we're, we're we've got a wide shot of this huge bathhouse with this beautiful scene. just gorgeous. And uh, so we see Genevieve uh, naked, as she likes to do, wrapping herself in a towel. And is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> or does Alan drop from the ceiling? <laughs> it seems like it has the most, like, kind of... Um... Unsubtle entrance into the scene ever. He's like been under the water, and then it's like, "Rah, I am here!" Did everybody check me out? Which they then do. Everybody's kind of eyeing him up again. Cannonball. In this lovely, this like, uh, it's like a reverse cannonballs. I don't know what the fuck's happened. <laughs> oh, he like, comes. Say, maybe he did. Yeah. Hmm? No, I, I, I think you're right. I think he did jump out of the water. I thought he dropped from the ceiling. That makes less sense. But <laughs> <laughs> he just like been lurking down there. But uh, yeah, he, he pops up and they're, they're both kind of, you know, everybody's like naked, I guess, in this lovely like sex fog looking stuff that's hanging yeah. around it, which is just kind of apt. Sadly, uh, we don't get to see Roland's Wybanga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has a little talk with uh, with our buddy uh, Guinevere, and then uh, we finally see the, the sacred object. Oh, we look at the, he looks at the Polaroids of the sacred object. Yeah. I think he tells her about him finally, and she suggests uh, that he goes see Mr. Moritz. I believe his oh, name is. Oh, is the antique dealer or something? Yes, um, he's the antique dealer that uh, our buddy Roth used to deal with. This is Arnaldo Del Aqua, mm. who one thing I I thought was ridiculous about this scene when we do finally get to see this guy, um, his death is set up like there was a previous scene with him. Because they introduce him and then boom, they kill him immediately. But I thought that yeah, was funny. Yeah, uh, it could have used another moment with him at some point somewhere. Uh, he gets directions. Uh, Alan gets directions to go see this guy, and of course the directions are uh, deceptively simple. Mm. And he immediately gets lost in this the streets of Budapest, and uh, he runs into a literal wooden cobweb. Uh, they've blocked off the street with the most. Um, imposing looking uh blockade it's this freaking literal spider web made of steel yeah. and wood it's very funny yeah it's great it kind of i was just thinking it reminds me about how he keeps getting turned around and lost as well a bit of the beginning yes. of uh, lisa and the devil oh yeah that's right like is that even a metaphor anymore when you literally build the object <laughs> we literally oh yeah we built a spider labyrinth <laughs> it's very <laughs> subtle like in, ca- in case there was any any doubt in anybody's mind exactly. what was going on there our, our antiques man, Moritz, uh, he gets blackballed. I love saying that. Oh, God. And then oh, something else, yeah. the fucking shit kicked out of him. Yes. This, doesn't he? It? It's like... Yes. And the thing is, is this is kind of what you're getting at. It's like, it almost comes out of nowhere. And then it, it'd be like, if this was a gangster movie earlier on, somebody would be asking him for money. And then when he doesn't pay for protection or whatever, right. they'll come around to his house and just tear shit up. Like, he know? should have at least had a, a chance to talk to this guy on the phone. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just one of those things. Like you know, th- this yeah, movie does yeah. have a few uh, 
uh, band-aids over the, mm-hmm. the holes in the plot, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, this would be one of them. It's kind of like, huh, who's this guy? But he gets mm-hmm. murdered by our good old uh, Celia, the, the, the spider woman here. And uh, <laughs> Alan gets there too late and uh, finds the guy's body. And the creepiest shit is we just see our killer behind a just duck behind a curtain and disappear like mm. oh i love it's so effective it's so creepy even though you know you've seen her you know the danger you know it's going to happen it's just still just oh, really unsettling it is those like sort of things i think in this movie even you know from the beginning like you say the 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 tilt and like the use of the music and yeah. just even just stuff that i can't put my finger on like the vibe of you know when he first goes to visit um roth and maybe yeah. maybe it's how uh is it is it is his not wife is it celia mm-hmm. how she's like made up and it's just so severe and he's yeah, just so furtive and like paranoid it's just it all just puts you completely on edge straight away it's great stuff great Love stuff it. he finds the object but he has to fight a stop motion spider to get to this object so it's a little tablet with all the secret runes on it or whatever uh, but he takes it and gets out of there. Uh, William Berger rescues him and encourages him to get down in the sewer with him. Yeah. Which is a weird euphemism for sex. <laughs> or it's a, it's marijuana. Like, hey, let's climb in the sewer. That's what you call hitting the bong these days or something. Exactly. Exactly. Especially if you're not cleaning the bong water in about a month. <laughs> it's the gurgling bong water in my soul. <laughs> Um, he tells him that the secret is in the tablet, and I honestly uh, did not hear any of the information other than I think the tablet can identify the the who is a part of the conspiracy. Um, mm. I did not listen to any of. I am just like Alan. I'm not listening to any of Alan. Uh, excuse me. I'm not listening to any of the burger warnings. Yeah, I think this is <laughs> that point in the movie, and again, just after this week, like last night, that's about where. My ability to 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 uh, take those exposition dumps, which again <laughs> sounds like a euphemism, <laughs> and just generally take extensive notes, so it broke down. So like, nope. yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah, it's fine. It's more of the MacGuffin action. So yeah, yeah, exactly. He he tells Alan to leave to go through this tunnel. This is my favorite scene in the movie, where Alan is mm. he's going through this cavern system to get away, uh, while the uh, the the Spider Woman. Um, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is uh, she, she's killing Burger. But as he's walking through this cavern, he sees you know a body he recognizes, and then he sees another body of someone he did not see get killed, and then another body, and then some skeletons, and then he sees more bodies rotting in this like uh, watery, nasty, sewery crapola water, mm. and then he sees a fucking car. Ah. There is a car with a corpse in it at the wheel, and it just gets more and more insane. Like mm. these people have killed like a large section of the po- of the uh, population of Budapest. God, you know, I, either just my memory playing up, or I may have missed that. I, I don't, I don't oh, know. Yeah, Again, dude. it's just a reason. Like this whole bit and the production design of it is a big reason. Well, one of many like scenes, I guess, where again we're just like crying out for the Blu-ray, aren't we? Just totally. so we can really yeah. sink into all this. There's also a a fake bat, and uh, hmm. Fulci and Argento were like, "Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> now we're gonna press charges. <laughs> Can't steal our shit." Uh, but uh, oh yeah, so. Burger gets uh, black balled as well, and we actually see the ball hatch, and there's a giant spider inside. Mm-hmm. While he's distracted by that, then the spider woman gets him, um, and yeah, it's her drool. Her her spider uh, her spider web comes out of her mouth and then hangs him. So he's also hung, just like Doctor Ruff. Mm-hmm. A lot of big men in this movie. The cop picks up Alan. He's like, "Oh, thank God you're here," and he's like. Come on in. I'll take you away. I told you not to wander around the city. And sure enough, the cop has a spider scar. He's got a scar too as well. Alan jumps out of the car. And then <laughs> he manages to go to Genevieve's place. and uh, Or the hotel. I can't tell where he is. And uh, she yeah. wants to have sex. But he's like, hold up. My windbreaker's filthy. Can we please <laughs> have it dry clean first, ma'am? But I love the whole thing of like... All she has to do is, he's completely exhausted. He's on the bed. Mm. All she has to do is climb on top of him. And he's like, I forgot all my troubles. <laughs> um, she gives him sexual healing. And uh, I want to thank the Japanese VHS or Laserdisc for, of mm. course, censoring the pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
these two make the sex act. And right before they do, they I was hoping for the digital, the pixelation that they do <laughs> in Japan, but they chose to just do a uh, a nice uh, mist effect around her groin area because she's so moist. <laughs> Again, I, I think I missed that. And I should say, uh, I was wondering whether I should do this or not. And I was just like, fuck it. I, I was watching this um, uh, Japanese rip you send me my laptop plugged into a 55-inch 4K TV. <laughs> Yes, this was not a a high quality uh, download here. This is the the best we got, folks. You know, it's it's funny though. It's like a lot of the time, it's one of those. And me and you have obviously watched a lot of like bootlegs and stuff over the oh, years yeah. of variable quality. And when you kind of, and especially if you're somebody who's grown up on like VHS and stuff, it's like once you adjust kind of to the relative quality of whatever you're watching, it really doesn't matter, right? You know, exactly. And it's like it still often looks better than you expect it will anyway. So, yeah. how the hell did this survive? Mm, mm. After the sex act, uh, Alan falls asleep, as men do after sex every time without fail. Uh, he wakes up and she f- he finds out. Um, well, after she drools on him, she she mm. exhibits some spider lady things on his back. The way um, all post coital things happen, uh, she she's got some spider senses. He wakes up later, finds that she's taken the tablet, uh, which is a very relatable thing in 2021 oh yeah yeah. a lot of one night stands someone wakes up in their phone or their tablet or their netbook (laughs) uh their e-reader their sony hawk man has been stolen technology joke so that's when we hear the growl of the spider woman of celia she comes after him i keep wanting to make like a a celiac disease like i want to make like a a gluten-free joke, but I, that's not oh, that's right. not smart. That's that's a dumb thing. Uh, so her and Alan fight. This is fight, fight, fight. fight. Sorry, great. Because <laughs> you know we, you know, some of these killings have happened off-screen, obviously, and you know, usually mm. uh, she's just she got super strength. This lady, she beats the living yeah. shit out of people or just overpowers them immediately. Alan is like, "Fuck you, bitch!" And they have a full-on fight. So there's like beard energy or something, just like gives him an extra edge that yes. normal humans don't possess. Yes. It was really funny because uh, he managed to slice her with with a, with a something, a piece of glass. Yeah, or, or a big a, shot oh. of the window or something. Yeah, before that, he has like a weird sculpture mm-hmm. with a, a knife blade and he slices her with that first. Ah, right. And yeah. Lieto was like, oh, she bleeds. And I'm like, he found out that she's not entirely a supernatural being and he manages to smash her into the mirror and, or some glass cabinet thing. And then, uh, yes, he uses the glass to stab her throat and he actually beats her. He actually defeats her. Mm. Um, I wrote in my notes, the itsy bitsy spider just got effed up, which made me think of the line in Scott Pilgrim. Your BF's mm. about to get effed in the B. <laughs> I don't know why that. Po- I just can't get out of way from comic book movies, boy. Apparently not. I got problems. At least it's a theme <laughs> in this episode. Yeah, yeah. I already made all my Bitcoin jokes. So, <laughs> Love it. so this unfortunately is not a victory. Guinevere, uh, Genevieve tells him that, uh, "Oh, you've killed now. You've 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 tasted blood. That means you're mm. one of us, bro." Yeah, he's totally like played into their hands or something, and now it's like there's like a baton that's being passed or something. I guess. Yeah, she tells him that you're going to join us and spread your seed around the world. And he's like, didn't I already do that? Waka waka. Uh, she's like, trust me, trust me. Get on the altar. Leads him to this, one of those terrifying things uh, mm-hmm. where, you know, you're taking this person and you see all the characters of the movie you've met before. And of course, yeah. literally everyone is in on it. Oh, God, yeah. It made me, um, and just a lot of this movie, I've been saying to you, I have meaning to really watch Perfume of the Lady in Black for ages. Oh, and yeah. I've just... I've just not been in the right mood because it's, as much as I, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's the sexual violence is always there. That's true. Yeah. It, it makes just, it yeah less fun. Mm-hmm, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, that is one of my favorite freaking Italian horror slash giallo offerings of all time. Oh Wonderful. yeah. 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 Me too. Like say when you are kind of, you know, in a mood where that's not going to bother you as much or whatever, uh, yeah. or not acutely sensitive or already borderline depressed. It's like, otherwise it's like, it's fucking amazing. Oh, actually there is uh, one of our old episodes just kind of connects me to as well. And you can probably help me out with this. Obviously because you've seen a lot more of these things than I, I know, I know we said this isn't really a shallow. It's more like, but we'd 
some people call like jello adjacent or you know that there are elements or supernatural or whatever but you know yeah. like perfume of the lady in black and the other one's going to mention short night of the glass dolls oh yeah, films yeah. That have that kind of paranoid conspiracy exactly. sort of element to them oh and as well because i would rewatch this recently i said <laughs> so I, I know it's black gloves and jane b and uh, the eyes wide shut it's now a jello it's canon <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, yeah, another another one that I think inspired this movie uh, based on because some of the titles you mentioned just now inspired uh, they think inspired uh, Roberto Curti, the author, um, mm. uh, those you mentioned, and also um, House of the Laughing Windows. Oh God, of course, yeah. yeah this this yeah. feels like a little bit of poopy, <laughs> poopy Avati. That's a point, and uh, yeah, somebody else mentioned related to to that and to him uh, and this. I've not seen this many times. It means really watch it for ages, but uh, Zedda a bit as well. Oh, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. My top three in my top three mm. favorite Italian horrors right there. Nice. Check out Brad and I talking about it. We did that one a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> so they tie him up and uh, they, they, they we see the creepy baby monster. Mm. Uh, so this presumably is uh, Dr. Kuhn's. Dr. Kuhn, Miss Kuhn's dead baby that they've used as a host for their monster. God, yeah. You know, I don't think I'd even made that connection, but yeah, it makes total sense. I literally did that just now. <laughs> cool. No, it did. It, 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 it would fit, though, perfectly. So they, they have this, like, altar in this creepy lit room, and there's a coffin-shaped hole in the wall, and inside is the, is the baby monster, which is mm. wild wild mm. special effects man uh they've sliced his wrist open and the baby starts screaming and then it giant spider legs start poking out of it and then <laughs> its <laughs> neck starts to elongate oh, and yeah. the next thing you know it's got this long neck and its head turns down and you see its spider eyes on its head brilliant oh, but leah is like <laughs> leah is like if it's a spider why does it have a long neck <laughs> <laughs> i'm like don't think about it don't think uh, about it. My my only explanation to that, and it might just be incidental, uh, because that whole stretchy neck effect and some of it made me, and the spider legs coming out made me think very much of the thing. Yes, uh, that was another thing that probably referenced this whole sequence. Yeah. Would, oh, we should make, mention, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. this is uh, Sergio Stivaletti. Ah, right, of course, Doing yes. the special effects, because yeah, you, you know they're grotesque and insane, and it's Italian, so there you go. <laughs> so he turns into, the baby turns into a freaking... Uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, stop motion creature mm. and put something, I'm guessing something inside of Alan in his wrist hole. Mm. <laughs> but I, that I don't remember what it was I, like that. I do not recall at all what it was. I just remember it happening. Yeah, I could be misremembering this. I thought I'd seen it like I want to say I yeah, either it dropped something out or I thought for a minute. So unless I'm misremembering that it shrunk, like yeah. dove, dove, dove into his wrist or something, I just I don't even know. No, I mean, it's, if it's if it's able to kind of unfold like that, then who fucking knows? Yeah, we see a shot of Celia dead, you know, blood splattered, and all of her wounds disappear, mm. and she goes back to being normal looking Celia again. So <laughs> maybe uh, th- these people are uh, immortal, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, that's the end of that scene. Alan's just screaming, and then we cut back to America's most fascinating city, <laughs> Dallas, Texas, where um, he's fine. Alan's totally great. Goes to see our people, and he's like, hey, you know, Roth killed himself, didn't tell me anything. There was no research. We don't have any notes. My bad. And they're like, <laughs> oh, but wait. The priest <laughs> says, we got a package from him with Polaroids, with all the, the runes and the symbols. Hold on. I'll go get it. Dude goes to get it, comes back. Yeah. The meeting room with the three guys is the two guys, and Alan is empty. And in the uh, little, uh, I guess, broom closet next to the <laughs> meeting room, uh, he finds the bodies of our our businessmen, our vague businessmen, mm. blood splattering every square inch of the room. And then they hear that creepy moaning, groaning cry of the the spider woman, and it's freaking Alan mm. with his teeth all funky. Now he's the buck tooth <laughs> creature. With a knife, and he's like, <laughs> freeze frame, the end. Whew, man. Oh, that's that's all the plot there. Um, <laughs> it let's was. see. Let's see if I have any other cast that, um, to talk about. Growl. I was just thinking it's kind of different, but you're reminding me a bit of, probably just because I think about this movie a lot, of uh, Madman and Madman Mars. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Madman Mars little whiny bitch sounds like. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god! Thank yeah. you for catching yeah. that. That is so funny. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me look at my book here. Uh, this movie uh, did not do well. Um, as a lot of things in the late 80s uh, Italian horror scene did not. Uh, they really thought this was going to be a, a big hit, but uh, it was not. Uh, there was an article that came out before it. It does not say who the article author is, uh, but there was a, they were promoting this movie along with um, Rorette, which is a big right. uh, Hitchcock-influenced uh, giallo that I'm trying to locate a decent copy of, as what well as you spell that? Uh, R-O-R-R-E-T. And also a film called Il Bosco 1 or Il Bosco. Oh, sense, yeah. Il Bosco. I think I've seen. Uh, Il Bosco is like um, a kind of an Evil Dead uh, demons ripoff. It's also called Evil Clutch. Mm, mm. Uh, it's got Carolina, oh. um, Carolina Cataldi Tassoni in it from uh, all kinds of shit like opera. Mm. Uh, but they were talking about this movie and those two movies as being like this new wave of Italian horror. And the article also referred to uh, Fulci and other older um, horror directors as hacks. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, really stupid. That's just some fucking asking for some bad karma right exactly. there. Exactly. Good grief. Uh, but, yeah, this, this, this did not do well at all, which is really sad because I think this is mm. an exceptional film. I think it was really great. I mean, at any time it would be, but especially for, and I'm not, we all, I'm sure at this point, all love, you know, mid to late 80s Italian horror, but, even though yeah. th this feels maybe a couple of moments aside and things that obviously mm. date the period, not again, you know, again, in the best way, but it feels like maybe owing to the, like you said, the script sounds like it hung around for a while. It feels like it, an older film, yeah, like the, the pace and oh, yeah. kind of vibe of it. But it's, yeah, it's, you know, just looking at the release dates, it's telling that, yeah, it came out in Italy in like late August. And then it says in West Germany, out on video, by, on literally on Halloween that same year. <laughs> That's not good. Mm. Yeah. But mm. th this has, um, th it's, this is a post dubbing one uh, yeah. where s there's some live sound and there's some people who were, uh, who were dubbed in post. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, like the I, kids in the opening scene. Oh, definitely. God. <laughs> oh, my God. They, they just could never dub children right in these freaking no, movies. It's no. so funny. Uh, but, yeah, this this is a perfect example of something really good sneaking out, uh, despite the plot holes and the weird shit. Because, folks, I hate to tell you this. If a movie's plot doesn't hold up under scrutiny um, and there's there's some holes in it, it's still a great movie. Mm-hmm. Because um, I don't give a triple rat's ass about plot. I love Italian horror. Mm -hmm. Like, I lo I don't give a shit. Like, story doesn't work. I'm like, oh, oh, someone wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the atmosphere and the weird, man. And that's mm -hmm. this is this Me movie. Too. It's got it. Oh, yeah. Definitely delivered in spades. But yeah, um, good old uh, Gianfranco, Gianfranco Gianni, uh, he went and made some TV movies. And then he kind of like... Uh, finished up his career in uh, documentaries. I'm not right. sure if he's retired or if he's just, you know, not working because of the pandemic or whatever. Uh, uh, um, but yeah, uh, Simon, I'm gonna I'm gonna volley this to you. Do you have any other notes? And uh, do you how do you like this one? Uh, I think we've been through everything really uh, as we were going through. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I I love this one. I, you you asked me, and this is how we came to cover it. Um, I forget the this was the precise question, but like obscure Italian horror films, that I'd love to see on Blu-ray. I think that's what you asked me, and this yeah, was yeah. the first thing that jumped to mind. And yeah, it really is. It's like a holy grail sort of title at this point for getting a proper release. I think we need to like tag Severin and Vinegar Syndrome and God knows who else. <laughs> you know, in a post a second, exactly. somebody please release exactly. this. Exactly. You know. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it's already in the works. I bet you. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll bet I'm you half, five I'm... bitcoins that this is already in the works getting a Blu-ray right, right now. Five in, in Texas. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said in Dallas, Texas. I, I That's what I was just thinking. In, 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 oh, yeah. In Texas, Dallas, Texas. Oh, or something. <laughs> oh boy. But are, are you, so you're a fan of this, this spider lab? 
Oh yeah, no, I'm a big fan of this one. Um, yeah, I think I've kind of sort of summed up why already. Like we just said, the 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 um, like you said, the the weird and the atmosphere and yeah. the, the the kind of unsettling conspiracy vibe, and also how it is like we said, kind of has shallow elements or slasher elements. So it's still it's still very entertaining to watch. Yeah, nice. I really really love the the music for this. Mm. Um, mm. I think the dude, Franco Piersanti, uh, yeah, Franco Piersanti, I think um, his kind of, his his work in this kind of reminds me of Pino Donaggio a little bit. Yeah, no, I see that. Yeah, some of the, the themes and stuff. And again, yeah. you know what I was saying about it feeling like kind of an older movie. You think what a lot of Italian horror scores of this era kind of sounded like. I mean, God, case in point, I was watching Zombie 3 last night. You know, that's a Stefano Mainetti kind of synth score, which again, I love. But this is much more kind of old world and kind of classical. Yeah, I love it. Nice. Um, this composer also did the music for a very unusual sexy giallo uh, oh. called Bizarre. That um, rings a bell. From 1987, directed by Giolana Gamba. It is um, a very ridiculous... What's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it is an erotic thriller, but mm-hmm. uh, it's just so bizarre. It lives up to its name. Uh, I highly recommend Bizarre. It's Oh, even the cover on IMDb. Yeah, my God. I mean, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Very, very trashy. Very <laughs> trashy. I should warn you, it is trash festival. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the, the camera work is amazing. The art, the production design are just fantastic. Frickin' uh, spiral staircases and old mm. architecture and uh, creepy characters, those paranoid, delusional freak fest, you know, so crazy. Oh, sorry, I just thought yeah. there's in one more movie this kind of reminds me of a bit. And, again, mm. having that. And I think, tell. you know, like with Sean Knight, the Glass Dolls and other ones, well, heck, anything in Europe even, you know, like Italy, perfectly the Lady in Black. Yeah. But I, I got to thinking of the sect as well, which is yes. that in Germany, you know, again, having that very old Europe yeah, yeah. sort of feel kind of adds to the creepiness. And, of course, again, that's got the conspiracy vibe of, and you wonder this with Alan and this, you know, whether he's kind of set up from childhood. Yeah, you know? yeah. This was a, this was a, uh, what is it uh, destined to happen? To him. Yeah, yeah. And then check out our episode on the sect we did a while ago. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, my joke is about the actor, uh, oh, Mr. Frank. Wabanga. Is um, <laughs> he does have a stiffy? In that he's very stiff on camera. Yeah. But there's also a joke like he had an erection. That <laughs> see what I did there. I see. We've all seen what I did there. <laughs> well, Simon, thank you for joining me. I'm glad we freaking uh, did this one. Thank you for picking it. Oh, this is wondrous. Oh, no, my pleasure. My pleasure. Man. And uh, you and I will reap the rewards. We'll get all the uh, the royalties from the Blu-ray. Yeah, if it comes out in like the next six months, then yeah, definitely. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think, uh, I think companies who release movies really should just talk to me and you yeah maybe not about movies talk to us about freaking uh flogging the dolphin sitting on pete's crotch the uh the the mcu <laughs> yes talk about talk about freaking uh iron man 3 with us <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, no, that dates me. That's one of the last ones of those I saw, actually. Damn, that's that was a while like ago. Five years ago. Yeah, yeah. You, you love Christmas movies, I know you do. I do. Yeah, that was God. It was yes. I remember when I watched that. It was the day we got our dog, actually. So it was about five years ago, and I was having a kind Aww. of called it like Black Black Christmas, watching all of Shane Black's Christmas movies, which <laughs> is obviously awesome. just pretty much all his, of his whole movies. career. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Mm. Well, folks, thanks for listening. Please uh, beware of the vortex. And uh, when a woman starts drooling on your back, marry her. Mm. Do it. <laughs> Bye. Good night. This is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is The Doom Show, go to 
hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can